Hey, what's going on guys? I'm Mike from Obox, and in this video we're going to be discussing a couple basic After Effects tools that you could use in other projects. Now, for this example, we're just going to be replicating the Skype loading screen, and again, these tools are helpful in other applications on After Effects, not necessarily only this one, so um, this is just an example. So we're going to create a new composition, and it's going to be about 10 seconds long. So what we first want to do is create a background, layer new solid, make the background maybe an off-white color, and hit OK. Now what we're going to do is we're going to lock it down so that way we can't we don't accidentally select it when we're selecting other layers, and then hit the shy tool and then apply the shy. That way I can't select it. So what I did was I created a circle by holding the shift key and dragging it uh, to the right. And essentially it makes a perfect circle. Now what I did there was I just drug the anchor point into the center of the circle and then aligned the circle in the center of the composition. I'm going to change the color to a kind of a bluish color only to replicate what Skype looks like. Uh, the color's not exact, but it doesn't really matter. You can make it any color you want. So next what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to scale down the object to an arbitrarily small value. Uh, the only reason why I do this is that way it makes the animation look a little cleaner when you're looking dealing with small objects because you'll see that we're going to be duplicating it a couple times. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to drag this circle above the, the center point by holding shift and just dragging up and then pressing Y on the keyboard and moving the anchor point down back into the center of the composition. So what essentially this is going to do is when I hit R on the keyboard to get rotational property and increase the rotation to one circle or 160 degree revolution, um, it's going to rotate about the center of the anchor point instead of the actual center of the object. So that's why I move the anchor point to the center. So going into the uh, graph editor, essentially what I'm doing is selecting the ends and adding some easing. So what this is going to do is it means that the velocity as it goes um, from starting to do the circle or the full revolution to um, getting to the end, it's going to be a little bit smoother and snappier in the middle. So the effect that you get is something that looks like that. It's just a little bit snappier and it definitely adds a lot to your work. This is going to be an example of uh, on the right obviously no snapping and on the left having it kind of have some nice more smooth motion. It just kind of looks nicer and it adds the production value to your to your video. So what I'm doing is I'm, I click the layer and I hit Command D or Control D a couple times to duplicate the layer and then pressing U on the keyboard it shows me all the keyframes. So as you see they're all revolving around the same point and at the same time. So what I'm doing is I'm selecting the bottom keyframes and pressing Alt on the keyboard and pressing right on the kind of directional pad and I'm doing this for each layer so they're going to be staggered by one frame um, each one down. So I'm going to select them all and actually first what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag these end ones in. So essentially what that's going to do is make them revolve faster, but then I'm going to select them all again, and at the very last keyframe, holding Alt, I'm going to drag it out, and essentially what that does is it proportionally drags all of the keyframes out, so it makes them more, it makes them evenly spaced even when you drag them out, and it increases the distance between them. So pretty much what that did is it turned the one keyframe difference in between them to like two or, or probably even like four or five keyframes. And what I'm going to do again is I'm just going to kind of mess with it until I kind of get a uh, rotation that looks the best and I obviously don't want the first circle to get to the end before the last circle leaves and I don't want them to all be bunched up the whole time so I'm just gonna go in and I'm just kinda move them around and just see kinda what works best and I think that that works good for me so you notice they all have the same snappy movement they're just staggered by a couple frames which again gives it a nice kinda snappy but yet um, staggered look which is exactly the way Skype does it so um, just real quick going back through uh, just kind of seeing how exactly it's revolving. Again, it looks pretty decent. What you'll notice also is that at the very end, the key for, or the object actually kind of grows as if all the balls are expanding. And there's a lot better ways to do this, but just a real quick way what I did was I duplicated the top layer. So it's essentially going to follow that layer. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the anchor point to the center of the object, but then I'm going to drag that little uh, pick wick or whatever you want to call it um, onto that top object. So essentially what it's going to do, also I'll show you, I'm going to invisible everything, is that is that it follows that object even though its rotational point is in the center. So that is an easy way to have a circle that follows the first circle um, because otherwise if I try to scale it, it would just scale really out of place and you could try it if you want, but it, it just won't work. 
So I'm setting a scale keyframe there, and then at the very end, I'm going to set another scale keyframe where it kind of grows a little bit. If I hold actually command and drag, it does it by decimal, um, so you get a you can do more precise scaling or really movement at all. And pretty much what you see there is that as they all kind of bunch up, they grow. But again, you want to add some sort of kind of make it seem a little smoother because the objects actually aren't entering at the same speed. Now I was messing around a little bit and it turned out that this setup here just does not look good for the way the scaling works. So what I found is actually a slightly different variation. It's a very fast scale up but a slow um, slower towards the end if that makes sense. So it's an easy out and so that way it kind of matches a little bit better with the scale that you get as all of the objects bunch up. So essentially now all you have to do is kind of make it so make it so when all of the objects are finally inside of the circle it's it's its final scaling position and then when they all touch that's when it starts and again this is not necessary it just kind of adds a little bit um, and there are again much easier ways and better ways to do this but this has just been a quick tutorial on essentially essentially a couple quick tools such as duplicating layers, adding staggered effects, and using the graph editor, which can be a pain in the butt a little bit, but using the graph editor and using some of the alt and command tools that'll just kind of make your productivity um, increase and your quality increase as well. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like. If you want to see more, let me know in the comments down below kind of some of the things that you want to see. And as always, like the video and subscribe. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching.